fits perfectly inside the other end of the positive going from the fuse block to Now if I had unlimited appeal. Oh, he's got it! He got the minnow. We're out fishing again, day two. Perfect. Check back in once uh, we're up to temp. So I'm in need of a portable heater and power system. There's two specific reasons why I need this setup is for ice fishing in my portable ice shack and for winter camping. Now I know nothing beats a nice wood stove fire, but what I'm hoping to get out of this build is something that is compact and versatile. This is gonna be a three part video. So we're gonna focus on the heating system, the electrical system, the DIY power pack, and then also how everything comes together and you know, hopefully works. Echo, do you wanna go ice fishing? Do you need to be warm? Why are you going ice fishing? Yeah, you don't want to freeze. No, you don't want to freeze, don't you? You don't want to freeze during ice fishing. That's why That's why I'm building this heater thing. I have a little buddy heater that runs off propane. I really don't like using this thing. It burns through a lot of those one pound propane tanks. And I know you can buy adapters and hoses to run on bigger tanks, but I have experience working with diesel heaters and I have some electrical knowledge. And so what I'm hoping to do in this video is show you step-by-step -step process on how I set everything up here, basically have heat anywhere I go. Now, before we begin, there's kind of three fundamental things that we have to get in order to really start this project. First thing obviously is a diesel heater. This is the all-in-one portable diesel heater by Vevar. I bought this thing online and I think I paid $189 for it. Now essentially this thing is everything that comes in the box is ready to go. So we're going to dive into that. I'll show you how I set this thing up. Along with the diesel heater you need a 12 volt power source and so I got a 50 amp hour lithium battery by CanBat. This is Bluetooth and then also a lithium battery charger but more on this later. The last thing and probably the most important thing is safety. You need to get yourself a portable battery powered carbon monoxide detector when you're doing anything that involves combustion and exhaust. So let's get right into it. Now technically you can actually run the system together just as is. Really wouldn't be a project of mine if I didn't take things apart and made some modifications to just bring it to that next level. First I'm going to show you all the tools and stuff I'm going to use to develop this project. So this is everything I'm going to use. I got an adjustable wrench, Phillips head screwdriver, flat head, some drill bits, a drill, a voltmeter because we are doing some electrical stuff so that's always good and handy to have. Some heat shrink, terminal kit a wire crimper and stripper i've got a lighter and some electrical tape and basically just a general purpose nut and bolt and self-drilling screw set just nice to have for little gizmo projects like this all right let's go over everything that i'm going to be using to build this portable diy power pot first thing is i have a plano 50 caliber ammunition case it is waterproof or water resistant at least. Nice low quality unit, you can buy it from the hardware store. And then I have all the goodies inside that I'm gonna be using for the setup. I have some old jumper cables. CanBat's lithium batteries are rated to be 1C current amps. Essentially you can pull the total amperage of the capacity of the battery, pull 50 amps out of this battery for one hour until it's dead. I am probably never gonna do that, but I have cables which are six gauge. That should be plenty safe to you know run the current that I'm expecting. Okay, so let's jump into the battery here. So this is a 50 amp hour battery by CanBat. It is a lithium iron phosphate battery. And this one has a Bluetooth compatible chip inside. So basically what that enables you is to use your phone to check on everything that has to do with the battery. So you don't need to buy a separate battery monitor. You can just do it from the CanBat app. Click on the battery you want to connect to. As you can see there, I have the battery 99%. Capacity is 50 amp hours. Voltage is 13.4 and is on standby because there is no nothing being drawn from the battery. There's other features. You can see essentially the current amperage that is being drawn. You can see the temperature and you see the amount of life cycles that this battery has gone through. This is a really handy tool because I'm able to monitor my battery using my phone. CanBat develops extremely high quality products. They have 24 hour customer service and technical service online. You can reach them at any point and they also offer free shipping across North America. I urge you if you're looking for a lithium battery, uh, CanBat is the way to go. They are supporters of the channel and you can use the code down in the description to get 10% off. A new exciting feature that is actually not currently available on the market is Anbat's proprietary uh, lithium battery charger. So they sent me this to try out. What I can tell you is that this thing is awesome. It comes in like a metal case, has nice connectors with all the appropriate connectors that come with it. Your wall adapter, plug, and then you have the choice of alligator clips. Or you can plug in these wires that have terminals. It is really simple. There's no way you can mess up positive and negative. They simply 
coming together like that. There's a fuse and then there's two LEDs here that make it really obvious when your battery is fully charged. So this setup I'm trying to keep really simple. I'm not putting an inverter. I'm not doing solar charging. So I'm relying on CanBat's lithium battery charger to keep the battery charged once I bring it home after a weekend of use. In order to protect the battery, I have a fuse holder and a 50 amp fuse. So I'm gonna wire that. And conveniently, this battery fits perfectly inside the ammunition case like so. I'm going to be running this jumper cable to a set of external battery terminals. I also got myself a 12 volt outlet socket thing from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description for this. It has a voltmeter built into it, two USB outlets, and then a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug. This one has a nice switch on off so you don't have those annoying LED lights on all the time. This thing already comes pre-wired and has a built-in fuse so essentially this is just a matter of hooking up to the battery and installing the faceplate to the case. So what I've already done is I cut out some foam, able to put that in like so. So when I put the battery in, I'm gonna go in like this. It's nice and snug and protected and won't bounce around and move around inside the case. Let's go ahead and do some wiring. Now, I feel like this is pretty obvious to say, but I feel like I should just say it anyways. Anytime you're doing 12 volt wiring, just remember that red is positive and black is negative. Really all I'm doing, sending the negative battery terminal and the positive battery terminal from inside the case to outside, installing them on the case on the top here. And then I can also charge the battery without having to take it out of the case. that one goes there and then this one goes on the other side kind of have to hold it in place there and there you are that's pretty simple now we got a remote negative and positive now what I'm gonna do is install my fuse holder and my fuse. So I want my fuse to be between my positive terminal on the battery and the positive terminal on the end of the box here, on the top of the lid. Okay, let's get a bolt through that. A little bit bigger. This one, it'll do. Okay, so I got the positive wire going to the fuse block and then I got the other end of the positive going from the fuse block to the positive terminal on the lid. The negative goes directly from the lid to the terminal on the battery. I made sure to leave myself enough length so that I can open up the lid fully. And as you can see there, tucks away nicely. Now I just gotta put in my 50 amp fuse and then I'll test it with a voltmeter. I temporarily had to unfix the fuse block because I realized that the bolt was actually preventing the fuse from going in. So that's in there now. There we go, 13.4 volts, perfect. Need to work a little bit on the cable placement, but that is essentially project done. Nice.
Okay, so I have the heater kind of disassembled here. I just removed the cover. Insane amount of screws on it. My general impression is that this thing is okay built. I don't have super high expectations because I paid less than $200 for this thing. There's everything else inside the box. Probably not gonna use the exhaust. Not this one, they suck. Those clamps, also garbage. Not gonna use those. Now everything kind of feels a little flimsy. You know, the fuel tank here, and you can see just kind of, nothing's actually holding it in besides the fastener for the pump there. Positive and negative terminal. And the wiring, the right kind of fuel line at least. It's not the squishy one. And there's just the heater here. On this side, there's the outlet, and then there's the little monitor. The first modification I'm gonna do is actually get rid of these little dinky screws. You can see they don't even, they don't even stay in. This is just the heat shield between the fuel tank and the heater, which I'm assuming is quite crucial, because uh, you wanna keep the heat away from, you know, the fuel source. And I'm sure it adds a little bit of structural integrity to this thing, so I'm gonna replace these little screws that aren't doing anything with these little bolts right there instead of the screw, so. Another thing I don't like is that this fuel line here just goes straight through a little hole that's bare metal. As you can see, there's no form of protection there. If you look really closely, you can actually see that the fuel line's already starting to chafe a bit. Right there. I'm gonna add probably some electrical tape uh, just to protect that there. And as far as little initial upgrades, I think that's about it. Time to put some fuel in it and uh, try this puppy out. Okay, I'm outside in the shed here and it is absolutely howling wind. It's like 45 kilometer wind gusts. I don't know what's going on this year, but it's been really windy. I can do the first start up here and just see if everything works. Making some progress here. Fuel filling manual mode. Uh, I gotta push the down and on off button simultaneously. This controller only has a left and right, so we'll fiddle with that. But essentially what I'm looking for on the screen is an H off or H on. H on means prime on. I have the heater set up here temporarily again, just wired really quickly. Um, but what I did is I heat wrapped the exhaust, as you can see. And so I'm gonna do a heat cycle just to cure that heat wrap. Um, and then also this is gonna test to see that this thing actually works. I've already primed it. Uh, let's turn this bad boy on and hopefully it runs. It's like the gold plug did its job. The pump is now running and this heater should start ramping up and start producing some heat. Usually these things are a bit smelly on their first run so I'm going to run it for probably an hour or so and get it really broken in. So good news, the heater is running really well, hasn't skipped a beat, and uh, it's putting out some nice heat. So the smoke that you see here is just the uh, exhaust wrap that's curing, so I'm going to run this for a while, get that all cured, make sure there's no more fumes. As far as the heater and stuff goes, I'm happy with the performance. I only got a little bit left, should be enough for today. Get out of the ice and do some ice fishing. Now you can see here, this is the whole reason of the setup. I have everything in my Pelican 75 sleigh, nice and tidy and compact, and I should be able to pull this no problem. All right, just making our way onto the ice now. A couple notes, especially in early season. 
have some ice picks and a spike, check the ice conditions. So uh, let's go find a spot here on beautiful Lake Nipissing and uh, see how this setup works. Safety first. All right, power is on. Now let's turn this bad boy on and get some heat in here. The heater is just warming up the gold plug. And then there's the fuel pump kicking on. And then now, after a couple minutes, I'll start blowing up some hot air. Perfect, check back in once uh, we're up to temp. Now we're sitting comfortable, fishing. Doing all right, now we're just missing the fish. Let's look at your app and see how we're doing with the battery. So we're currently using less than an amp, 0.9 of an amp. Pretty neat being able to basically monitor the battery inside there using my phone. Now, if I had unlimited fuel, it would say that I have 56 hours remaining worth of energy. So that is perfect for the weekend little getaway unit. There's a lot of reflection. Oh, there you go. See that? You see him hit it? Yeah. Look at that. Oh, he's got it! <laughs> he's got the minnow. Like, I could grab him. Look to him. <laughs> You're playing with him right underneath the ice. That's cool. Oh, I just lost it. No. Oh, that was probably a walleye. Uh. <laughs> Damn it. I lost my bait. And we're teasing Cisco's. Oh. Distracted. <laughs> oh, crap. All right, I oh, got another bait. <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. Nice little Walter. They're on the board. Yeah, nice one. <laughs> Double hitter. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, so that's basically the diesel heater project done. I am going to enjoy my evening now fishing and uh, hopefully we can pull a few through the hole. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please consider liking and subscribing. It really does help and I truly appreciate it. Thanks again and uh, stay tuned. All right, so a little update. We're out fishing again, day two. I decided to put the heater outside of the hut this time, and I know it won't run as efficiently because it is intaking cold air, but I can honestly say drawbacks of having the unit inside are just not really worth it. So now that I have the unit outside, we have way more room inside the shack, and running the unit, you know, on medium to medium high. I honestly say it's way more comfortable. We're here, two-man shack, and look how much room we got. I think from now on we're going to be running the diesel heater on the outside and just route the hot air intake uh, through the door like that. That's pretty good. 
nice cotton pants. Ooh, that's a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> Atta bee. We'll let him keep his, his snack. Yeah. He worked hard for that one.